All right, this should be a short little video. All we're gonna do is handle the submit on this form that we created last time, but I figured I'd kind of split out the actual functionality from the design. What we want to be able to do is say something like Mario at codinginpublic.dev, and then if I hit submit here, it should give us a little sign and then tell us thank you. So that's what we're gonna build out. We're not gonna send this to a real endpoint, but we're gonna build it out as if you were, so that it's really easy for you to swap this out for some endpoint that you create or get from a service. So let's go ahead and move over to our live example down here. And here's the form we're interested in. I've got the HTML pulled up over here. We've got the contact form itself. And we're also gonna grab access to the input. And then let's see what else. We will also need the button itself. So let's jump over to our main JS. And uh, below the image slider, let's add another section down here. Let's call this a uh, form handle. And we'll need those three things we just called out. So the contact form, and that will point to document.query selector. And we had an ID on there of contact form. And then we also had that contact button, which had an ID of contact button. And then finally we had our contact input. And that had an ID of email. So I should have all those ready. Let's go ahead and first of all, write an event listener and we'll do it for the form submit. Okay, so the contact form, and what we wanna do is add an event listener, and we're listening for the event of submit. Now submit will handle any clicks on the buttons anytime you hit enter when you're in the form and you're submitting it that way, so it'll handle all of those. That's why we're gonna do that. We'll pass it to something called handle form submit. All right, that'll just be a function we write, and let's write it. So up here, function, handle form submit, we'll take in the event, and then the first thing we wanna do is prevent the default because by default, whenever you submit a form, it'll just refresh the page and send everything to that page. So what we wanna do instead is say e.prevent uh, default. So just to make sure this is working, let's console.log prevented. And then come over here, let's pull up the console and let's submit something. All right, it prevented it successfully, good. All right, so let's come back over this way. Now what we wanna do is whenever we submit the form, you don't want somebody to be able to continue to hit your server while it's processing. So as soon as we submit the form, we actually want to add the disabled attribute to both the form and the button so that they can't click the button or submit the form. So we thankfully wrote a little helper function last time that we can access now. It was called add disabled attribute and it took in an array of items and for each of the items that was passed in, it would add that disabled attribute to the element. So let's go ahead and pass in the two elements we need. That would be our contact form and it would also be, with a comma here, our contact button. So if I save this and come back over this way, and we do this again, now these should be disabled and I can't click anymore. Now that it's disabled, let's go ahead and hide the input itself. So I'll grab my contact input, and then just with CSS, let's say style.display equals none. So let's try this again. If I come over here and I click, now I sh these should be disabled and this should be gone. And it is, cool. Now, before I remove that, I wanna make sure I grab the text. So let's go ahead and do that. So const, user email equals contact input. And what we're looking for is the dot value. And now let's go ahead and console.info. And let's just type a dumb message like your email is, and then whatever that is. So we this needs to be in backticks here so we can uh, add this template string. We'll do user email. All right, so because we're not submitting it anywhere, I just wanna show that we're actually getting it. Um, but obviously we're not gonna be submitting this to any kind of real API. So I'll come back in here. And let's resubmit and we get your email is and then it removes that input. Now perhaps to make this feel a little bit more real, let's grab this console.info and we'll pull that out into a different function. We'll call this something like post email to database and we'll pass it the user email. Now up above here, let's go ahead and write that. We'll call this fake sending email to API endpoint. So post email to database here, we're gonna take in an email and then we'll do our console.info inside of here and just change this out to read email. Finally, we'll return a new promise so that this essentially will act like a database. It'll kind of wait for a second to return something to us. We'll resolve here on set timeout and it will just resolve after, let's do two seconds. Now what that will allow us to do is to essentially treat this like an actual submission to a database. So this needs to now be in a sync function and we can now come down here and say await. Oh, so if I save this here and come back over this way, hit sign up, it waits two seconds, does that post email to database, and then it will remove the input. So we actually wanna change the timing of that, but I just wanted to show you that it is actually waiting on line 66 before it finishes to do line 67. So let's move this up one level. That way the input gets removed right away, but we're actually waiting as if the database is processing it. Finally, let's change the actual button text so that it looks a little bit more natural. 
we essentially are going to have two different states. We'll have the actual pending so saying that it's actually sending it to the server, and then we'll have a success message. So what I want to do is actually extract this out into its own object, just so we can kind of keep that separate and just call the property that we need on the object. So before we do anything more in that fake handle, um, let's come up here and we'll do something like options for submit button. We'll call this contact button options then, and this will just be an object. We'll have two different properties. One will be pending, and we'll add something here in a second in backticks, and then the other one will be success. And again, we're gonna set the inner HTML to whatever this is. So for now, we're gonna need two things inside of here. We'll need an SVG, and then we'll also need a span. Now this will have several classes. This will have an uppercase class, tracking wide, and then we'll also add an animate pulse. Now Tailwind comes with these animation keyframes like animate pulse that you can add to anything. So I'll come in here and hit sending, and then dot, dot, dot. Now for the SVG, let's come back to our phosphor icons and search for something like uh, loading. And let's see what options we've got. So we've got upload, this circle notch. Uh, let's, do, let's do this spinner gap. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the SVG right here, and we can just paste it in right here. Now, once again, I wanna grab all of these and just change them to current color. And that will take on the dark background custom color that I already have applied to the button as its text. And if I come back up this way, I wanna change both the width and the height to 24, which matches what I already have as the icon in that button. Lastly, to get this thing spinning, let's come in here and add a class. And there's another class I can use in Tailwind called Animate Spin. All right, so if we did that correctly, I can come over this way. And the first thing I need to do, uh, we can leave this alone for now, but just below this add disabled attribute, let's say that the contact button now, it's inner HTML needs to be equal to our contact button options dot pending. And if we did that correctly, I can submit this and there we go. We get this nice sending animation and notice this just keeps spinning and this is pulsating the entire time. All right, I'll refresh so you don't have to watch that. Uh, let's also just go ahead and copy this down because right after it's done sending and we get a response back, I wanna change this to success. And you could also add your own error handling as well if you'd like to, but I'll leave that to you. All right, this is just gonna be a span, so let's grab this right in here. And then we'll add one more span. This first one will say thank you. And for the second one, we will add an emoji. Let's look for the peace emoji. There it is, perfect. Let's try that over here. All right, cool. The only thing is that I've got this animate pulse on and I don't need that and that. Okay, <laughs> so let's try it one more time. Thank you. And then I'm also getting that response down here. Again, the only difference here with actually sending this to a database, you do the exact same thing, except you probably would need to handle the error and you might also want to actually send this somewhere valuable instead of just returning a promise. But most API endpoints, you'll actually get some kind of promise resolved and sent back to you. So this is a very realistic scenario where you're waiting for a response from a database and then acting after that has come back. All right, in the next short video, we are going to add the parallax effect that we've been waiting for this entire series that will kind of pull the project together. I'll catch you in that one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.